is the side or light that the physical eye cannot see. Breaking this dark down side down again. What is this damn dark side? The dark side is the fucking light. I've been talking about the dark side since 98. Scared of a whole bunch of people across the United States and stuff since 98. They said, that nigga, they done gone fool now. They, they, they see, 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 they go, you deal with that devil shit. Now they grin in your face. <laughs> yeah, man, hey, hey, hey. And they get behind your back and say, that nigga, yeah. Ain't nobody gonna step to you and you go, hey, man, that's a crazy shit you done because, see, they condition. They might think in actuality, in actuality, you might put some shit on them. See, they scared. <laughs> they be like, just in case that nigga know what he's talking about, I ain't gonna cross him the right way. So they grin for two, three years and shit, and then they get behind and all, and they be scared as hell. So that nigga had lost his damn mind. But they condition where they say, it might be that 100% chance that that nigga is right, and that nigga might put some shit on me. So when I see him out of here, and I grin in his face. <laughs> but the dark side is, the dark side is like, that's the mystery to this whole thing. What is the dark side? The only concept of what we call light is what these two eyes can see. And these two eyes are cheap. They are holographic eyes that can only register the physical. So the dark side is the light that the physical eyes can't see. Which is the light. That's the pineal gland can see that. The third eye or the first eye. So the dark side is the fucking light. Because we understand light Based on our two, uh, based on this side here, even when we imagine light, we still thinking on this damn side here. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. If light in this world is an illusion, then the dark side must be the true fucking light. That's right. Must be the true light. Now, in the, you'll see this in ancient Kemet. In ancient Kemet, you will see a grand assembly hall of gods. You'll be sitting up over Osiris. Up there, be a bunch of them up there sitting up, you know, on the on the um, on the uh, what's that creation scene? What one is that? The uh, judgment scene. You see the grand assembly hall of these particular letters up there. The grand assembly hall metaphysically represents the different components of the melanin inside of you, the archetype of the collective unconsciousness. So each one has a level of consciousness. That's the melanin inside of you. These gods are on the inside of you in that particular realm. That grand assembly hall that you see. They got it in the Mahabharata too. They talk about the great assembly hall. In um, the Grail mythology, they call it the gallery. Also in the whole Highlander thing, they got a Highlander 4 coming out. Uh, the Highlander thing. They got two, a, a new movie coming out. Mm-hmm. On Highlander, they got the guys that play the TV series, and they got Christopher Lambert. They teaming up together mm-hmm. in this, this Highlander shit. I uh, I tell you always get the Highlander movies and stuff. A whole lot of shit dro- dropping in those things. Um, you know, especially that first one is 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 is, is the bomb. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Um, to the grand assembly that you see, that's nothing but the different aspects of your consciousness, the melanin also too. Now it's interesting because going back to this. Uh, Hermes is Tahuti. And Tahuti, Hermes is Tahuti. And uh, Tahuti is the god of magic, the god of wisdom. In so many words, when you break it down on a, on a, on a uh, spiritual aspect, Tahuti represents melody. That's what it is. Tahuti is also the god of magic, wisdom, arts, and science, but it's also talking about alchemy. And alchemy is the study of melody, so the god Tahuti. Or Anubis in so many, and based on what mythology you're dealing with in, in Egypt, represents melanin. Now in Greece, Hermes is Tahuti. Is Tahuti. Which Hermes represents melanin. James Hillman, the psychologist, wrote a book called Dreams in the Underworld. He wrote Dreams in the Underworld. I think he wrote it in. Um, I think he wrote. I think he wrote the, uh, the first part. He wrote the uh, a shorter version in 1975. He put the major version out in 1979, and it's been downhill ever since. There must be a step in him and say, "Don't you ever put no shit out like that again. We gonna kill your damn mammy." <laughs> Because all his other stuff became light work after Dreams in the Underworld, James Hill. Mm. But in the book, he proved that Hermes or Tahuti or Melanin and Hades 
is winning the goddamn saint. This is some brilliant shit. Because I told you a long time ago that the word Satan, and even in my studies, Satan and melanin is one in the fucking same. Mm. Soot. Soot, which is blackness also, but Satan and melanin, including Gerald Massey's lectures in his book, he, he figured this shit out too in the section called the, the Devil of Darkness. He's figured it out too. I want to read this particular part to you. Page 141. Y'all all right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Because the, that's why the church You don't need to fuck with the church, period uh, I read this thing a couple of years ago um, I'm going to read this to you here Hence The sacrifice offered to the powers of darkness The four words of universal mythology That there was darkness And all the darkness At first was, was in the mind Okay, there you go, you go your melanin And all the darkness is created Dread without the, the influence of night, the eclipse, the black thundercloud, being the first felt primitive man visually emerge from the shadow of darkness as deeply impressed and indubitably um, died in the mind as was the body with its, with its natural blackness. Now, first of all, it talks about a dark cloud. Now hang on to me because there's some shit that's going down in the down. The government say, hey, take this shit to National News, Nightline, and tell the people what time it was two months ago. They had to come on Nightline and tell the people what, what time it is. So I say, when we get the fucking sign, it's time to damn do this shit. Mm-hmm. So the time is now because the shit is here now. Right. So now going on. The black man without was Negroid within. What is Massey talking about here on page 144 of Gerald Massey's lectures? <laughs> That's some profound shit. The black man without was Negroid within. His reflection <coughs> remains the mirror of mythology. Mm-hmm. That means all it is, goddammit, is based on your inner self. Right. Oh, read this shit again. This is some shit. <laughs> the black man or black woman the black man without, the reason why he is black, so many words, was Negroid within. That means he had melanin. His reflection remains the mirror of mythology. So if they were talking about the man without, his reflection would have to be inner. Because he just first said without. Do you hear this shit is saying? Now just follow me a minute what this goddamn shit is saying. <laughs> That the entire mirror of mythology and all religions is talking about the inner reflection of the black man that's out. He called him black. He's talking about this melody. Right. Well, Christ, Christos, anointed, olive oil, the, uh, olive oil, black olives, green olives, the chlorophyll is melanin in the green, the black is the carbon. All that shit is talking about what? Anointed what? Yeah. The blood of Christ, melanin. Mm-hmm. Now, the darkness then was the natural phenomenon, was the original devil that put out the light by swallowing it increasingly as the subtle energy of the ob- 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 obstructor or the, or the doubler or the general adversary of man. First, the devil was a female. That's right. That's true, too. That's the first thing they turned to the devil, which was the great dragon of darkness, Tiamat. Or the, or the Egyptian Typhon in Egypt. Typhon gave birth to Soot, to Soot, which became the Egyptian devil, or Satan, who was represented by the black jackal. The voice of darkness. There you go, right there. That's your ass right there. Because even in alchemy, the black jackal, which is Anubis, represents melanin. That's what this whole shit is talking about here. The voice of darkness, Soot, the black one, gives the name Soot, or black thing. You see what I'm saying? The Persian general was the black one of two powers, light and darkness. So, the primitive man, however, did not imagine the personality of the devil behind this phenomenon because of the darkness. The darkness itself was the devil even in late phenomenon. You see what I'm saying? The darkness of the, uh, which means, uh, it says, which means the, the aboriginal creation. The external darkness of the devil. The seven devils are the seven heads of the, of the old dragon. This stuff goes on and on. Now, in James Hillman's book, he put
prove that Hades, which is supposed to be hell, or in so many world, the ruler of hell, Satan, was in fact Hermes, and Hermes is Tahuti, which is the mistress of melanin, and this thing breaks down to the alchemical alchemical um, uh, process. Uh, the alchemical process. He proves this shit in the actual book. Dreams in the underworld, which might I add is always um, always uh, always end up something that's always uh, out of print when it gets real good. Um, in the other eros, the black figures which with, in whites dreams might be uh, loyalty. I'm trying to get to the point of getting to the point. Here it is. Blacks have had to carry a sort of sociological shadow from the religion of the faithfulness conceived as evil, the storiological values of all forgotten, that the black man was, the word is also T-H-A-N-A-T-O-S. That's called Thanatos. Thanatos. Now, when we look up the word Thanatos, uh, let's see. Bear with me one minute. Y'all all right? Because yeah. I, I read this thing and all, and I, I bring this thing back down to you because it's right in place with what I'm dealing with right now. Uh, bear with me one minute. Still got to go to the whole, uh, uh, yeah, Thanatos. Thanatos, um, Thanatos, a dream for which pursuing the black man is death. Death is the black man. So, well, we know Osiris is the angel of death. In so many words, um, dealing with the alchemical component in the in the Rig Veda, uh, in the Upanishads, the Rig Veda, the Mahabharata, they also say that this melanin has crushed death. It is some leftover substance from the primal worlds before we died. Before 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 we died. Um. Now, what does this mean? There's a group of scientists now saying they're looking for this leftover substance, this leftover from the Big Bang, from creation. And they're talking about all this stuff here uh, uh, um, that we're looking for this stuff and, they, and the scientists say we doubt that, that it exists. But they tell all of that. They tell all carbon. That's melanin. I mean, but carbon is... Carbon is melanin. Carbon is melanin. Right. Carbon is melanin. That's what melanin is. Right. The basis of that. Um, so they're saying they're looking for the leftover substance and all, but they're saying they, they doubt that it exists. Well, you know, they just running their mouth because they're dealing with the shit on the scientific level. It's talking about they ain't looking for no shit out there, no carbon out there. The leftover substance that they're talking about is they're looking for the doggone melanin or they're looking for the, the soul in melanin. It's in the movie Dark, Dark City. Uh-huh. When they was doing all the experiments, they was looking for the right soul. You see what I'm saying? And that's what they're talking about here. You see what I'm saying? That this leftover substance is inside of us. You see what I'm saying? When the brain sees, what the brain sees as shadow is light in the other world. What we see as light in, as light in this world is only an illusion because the brain is only to design to pick up an illusion. So darkness is light. And light in this world is the matrix brain is illusion. The pineal uh, brain picks up the real light that is the shadow in this world. You see, it's the shadow in this particular world. Now, in African mythology, mainly in your, in your, in African mythology, mainly over in Kenya, they said, or here again, another version of some of this creation myths. And you get it in Marie, Marie Louise von Franz. Creation myth. Um, her book, Creation Myth, but she don't name the name of the African tribe. I had to go to Primal Myths by Barbara Sproul. But I like the Mary Louise, Marie Louise von Franz book, Creation Myth. Excellent book. And she says, it says, when the Africans, the Africans say, when God, the true being or the true God, got down here, there was already a God that was already here. Whoever he was, he wasn't a real shit, he was a subordinate deity. And in so many words about, about his God getting down here, we end up worshiping that bullshit ass nigga, whoever he is. Um, you know, um, or whoever he is. Um, but this leftover substance that is 
Left over from the Big Bang is called the primordial ash or the carbonic ash, which the Seegas in the Hindu mystery call Rasa, Gunas, or Tamas. But they say that this particular leftover substance cannot go backwards into an original state. It has to keep changing until it transmutates. That's the process. That's why creation, the, the creation of what they call um, what they call creation of chaos. Chaos is a state of unorganized matter which change is supreme. So everything about us is based on change. They've done it with the music. Me, me and Latibu was talking about this. They haven't had any new music that was produced in the last 10 years. It's bullshit. And, then, and it's even it's even, even that way. Every city I go into because I travel, they got that smooth jazz bullshit. Right. Mm-hmm. It's not just here in Detroit. They got that shit in Atlanta. They got that shit in Philadelphia. They got it in New York. Well, that's an indoctrination. That smooth jazz. Now, what they do is for them, they put the other shit on late at night. They got some thing in New York from Rutgers University called Jazz from the Archives. And it is no joke. They go into all the history of this thing. But they understand that, that jazz was created off that Bodun energy. And, 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 and like um, Atiba was saying, he's playing that Art Blakey for me. And the drum beats, and then look, and he, and, and, and he played a piece, and it was definitely the Bodun thing, huh? Yeah, y'all turn to uh, 101.9 and 7 every week. Dead love. Dead love. Yeah, kids, you know, just his, he just played the yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, but I guess you got to. Yeah. But I guess you got to. <laughs> because see, in Atlanta, WCLK, which is Clark Station, they play the good stuff. But they play some of the. They have to play some of the, the other mainstream stuff too, but they bust all the good stuff too. So that's just the order of the day to stay on the air. But you just. But but the smooth jazz shit, you see what I'm saying? And I am white people shit, it's this easy listening stuff. Because <laughs> they got rid of the rock and roll shit, that Led Zeppelin and all that stuff. It's that crawly stuff. And they were dealing with that occult stuff, so they had to get rid of a lot of that too. That's when they brought in that born in the USA bullshit from uh, uh, Bruce Springsteen. I was saying to myself, damn, this Bruce Springsteen shit is country. And they put they brought out that born in the USA in 1984, and they kept that Bruce Springsteen up, and then it led to Garth Brooks and all of them becoming big in the 90s. Yeah. Now I used to work in the in, in the music industry. I was working for Peaches Records, and I was selling number one R and B salesman when I was in college. I was killing them, and we couldn't. The only country music we could sell was 45s. Country albums did not sell. But now all of a sudden, country is the number one shit. That means they programmed some people in that shit because they had to knock out even that punk rock and that rock and roll that was based off rebellion and based off some occult shit. So even the white people shit now is all that country. White people is country. Our stuff is just bad, messed up rap, and smooth jazz is for everybody else. You see, that's very key on, on how this thing um, um, went down. Going back into this particular science, remember, I talked about this yesterday, no sleep, no melanin works for you. And we're not talking about regular sleep, we're talking about deep sleep. Now, the ancient people used to heal themselves overnight just by going to sleep and going to that melanin realm. They found out that our people outside of slavery and our people for the first 50 years of the 20th century did the same thing, healing themselves overnight. So they had to... Uh, 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 go ahead and shut down that. Now, this is very interesting here, even some things, and this is history, but this has a lot to do with some stuff here because we hear some things and all, and everybody's raising up Martin Luther King and all, but do you know that Amalaj Muhammad, when Muhammad, well, you know, first of all, Martin Luther King, King did. But it's interesting what transpired in the meeting is Amalaj Muhammad told him, he said, Look, man, won't you bring your wife and your children to Chicago and I can put them as a safe, put them, and, and give you a safe haven? He said, Because if you leave this house tonight, I'll never see you again. Period. He told Dr. King? He told Dr. King that. He said, I'm offering you protection, but if you leave this house tonight, we'll never see you again. And King turned around and looked at him and said, I know. But my point here is that somebody offering you a safe haven seemed to me, although you sold out. It's human nature to try to run. Right. Hell, even the niggas in the mafia try to run and shit. Even your boy, um, Fish, when you bought fish on the, on the movie Godfather, 
when they said, one who's going to come and shut up the meeting is going to be the one to pray. Right, right, right. And after they looked down and said, you done fucked up, he turned around and said, is there anything they can do for me? <laughs> <laughs> he turned around and said, is there anything you, anything you can do for me? He said, no, not a chance, man. You know what I'm saying? So my point is, is that seems more like a person under mind control of some type of clone or something, man, where you go, somebody going to offer you this stuff, or either you just don't believe this man can protect you. Right. And he turned around and said, I know that I'm going to die. You see what I'm saying? I know that I'm going to die. But that's, 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 that's very key. Going over some other things, remember that, because one of the keys here is, is the people in the diet thing is saying that the whole menstrual thing served no purpose. I even had a sister even argue with me and say, well, why the hell do I have to bleed? <laughs> and basically what we got here is, if it doesn't serve any purpose, and I understand it is, it is, it, it, it it would be some type of thing that a lot of women say I got to put up with or whatever based on the fever and all this kind of thing. But remember, we're talking about ancient mindset and ancient practices and ancient spiritual aspects of our lives that was lost. And it was originally a form of birth control. The woman had the option to clean out an unwanted birth by literally bringing her period on at will. But we lost that science, and as a result, we try to make sense of it all. It's about like all these African rituals and stuff. If we say, that shit is crazy, why, why do I got to go cut off a chicken head? But the science to it, if we do the science to it, we can understand the necessity of it. But over the course of the years, we have lost the actual science to it and all, so therefore, we think it's crazy. You see what I'm saying? Uh, we, we think that is crazy. You must develop a hatred for the world around you. Mm -hmm. This is what's going to save you. This means that you develop the hatred, you don't necessarily have to go kill yourself. Right. <laughs> so for example, if, if we do all this, why don't we just kill ourselves? No. The mystery here is to let the alchemical component of the melanin inside of yourself line up on its own. When this particular stuff inside of you in your central nervous system lines up on its own, it brings on an alchemical death anyway and throws off this physical body. But the ultimate goal is to die. Mm -hmm. It's the ultimate goal. Some of y'all are saying right now, you know, I'm tired right now, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Come lay down and shit. <laughs> <laughs> and the only reason why you ain't took the plunge is because you've been programmed that that's wrong. wrong. Right. And you've been programmed to spill on the other side. Right. But like I told you, you ain't seen none of your ancestors trying to beat back the door to get down to the back down this year. Yeah, some of them don't know your ass since they left here. <laughs> Can't get in touch with them. <laughs> Can't do nothing. They don't want to see your ass at all. You see what I'm saying? Because ultimately, we're not related to each other in the physical right. sense. You see what I'm saying? That's just some foolishness. Uh, some foolishness and all. But one of the keys here is you must develop this particular hatred for the world around you. So that what the one way you do that is to throw off the anesthesia. I just get sick of so many black people and all trying to find a niche in what they're going to do to try to bring some pleasure to this bullshit down here. Mm. Or what their little pathetic lives and what their career and what I'm going to do and this is me. You don't have shit to do with that. Develop a hatred and all. This is a, this is, this is a form of the illumination of getting the latent forces in your body to go to another level is signaling to the mind that you're tired of this shit every day. You see, every day. So when people say, yeah, man, what you going to do about two or three years from now? I say, man, I, 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 don't, I can't think on that level. <laughs> I ain't been thinking on that level since 1992, I think. Mm -hmm. 93. You see, I can't think on that level. I can only think of one at a damn time. Right. You see what I'm saying? And that's what we're talking about here. One month at a fucking time, if it's not one day at a time. That's but since is. rent is due each month, <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to fuck around on a day and rent, miss your rent money or your mortgage money. So let's just give it a month. Right. You see what I'm saying? Let's mm -hmm. just give it a month and all. We don't want to set your shit out on the street. <laughs> and also, also too. Now, as the, the, the book Serious Mystery, we have Yemen Yah in the Yoruba aspect of this particular goddess, but in the serious mystery, Emiya is serious C. This again is also talking about an alternative reality that the earth is actually going to, or our people are turning into, which is called Emiya, are also now put back to Yemenya 
which is the great mother, uh, the, the, the great mother, uh, and this is the resting place for humanity. This uh, uh, to, to, to for humanity is also uh, I'm dealing with that. Now I'm going to get to uh, you go through a few other things right now, and I'm going to get to this. Uh, let me just uh, go through some of this stuff here, so we can get to this voodoo war. Pain and suffering is the only tr true thing that is pure. Suffering is just like the God Inanna. Now Inanna, if you get the book, the book has a book called uh, uh, the Book of Inanna, and in there she has to go through a whole series of transformations. And she had to take off all this jewelry, all her clothes, and she has to strip because she's ascending into a world to get to a higher level. And at the end of the journey, she dies. And when she dies, she literally. Um, she literally uh, uh, gains a whole lot of um, spiritual insight and spiritual power also to do what she want to do. So the Inanna story was also changed to Job in the book because they can't have the, the, the woman going through the process in the patriarchal religion. So Job becomes the great sufferer. Um, and black people, in a sense, are the masters of suffering. You say, well, why do I have to suffer? Because suffering is the only thing that is pure because if this is a dog, if you are in a prison, and you rebel against the prison, that's pure. You don't never want to know and accept the prison that you're in. So pain and suffering is the only thing that is pure. And so therefore it's inevitable. See, like we can't shake this pain and suffering on some kind of level and stuff. Look like we're on the right damn track. Because that shit will follow us like damn luggage. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Pain and suffering going to come and you can candy coat it all the hell you want. But if something will go wrong, it will. You see what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Because it's a, you know, and that's just the way it is. You see what I'm saying? And why is it, like I said, why is it that the movie Hellraiser, when you, when you, when they saw the riddle, riddle these the Cenobites come and all, and they doing all kind of horrible things for pain and suffering, because they're trying to tell you that the pain and suffering in an illusionary world, it may be pain and suffering in the Matrix, but in actuality, it is paradise outside this illusionary world. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Which is the dog on anesthesia. You see what I'm saying? So even our protest that we talk about is all still based on luxury. Right. You see what I'm saying? Some type of shit that ain't going right in this man's world that you want to go right so you can not have no problems. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. And also, one of the greatest problems ever is to understand death. That's one of the greatest problems ever. We don't understand um, death. Every day you wake up should be a bad fucking day. Yeah. Fall in love with death. <laughs> the book of the law says you should long for death and love for death. Now, what is this talking about here? Now, Alan Boyd Kuhn wrote his book, Lost Light, and he made an observation that other Egyptologists couldn't do, and guess who? I guess that's why his shit ended up being on the band and suppressed. And he says, the fact stands, they talk about the Egyptians, I want to get this right, uh, the Mark so and so, um, the Egyptians, the fact stands that they call the fact stands that they did call our life here death. And that what we speak of, when we speak of the dead in the sacred books, or in the indubitably, in the, in the, in the tongue twister, that is indubitable that they meant living humans. So in so many words, when they speak of the death in the books, they meant living humans. The word death and the dead are used in the old scriptures refer to living humanity in earthly embodiment. Now that is some profound shit. Mm -hmm. It's all in the movie Jacob's Ladder. He was dead the whole movie. Yeah, didn't know it. A fucker said, you been dead, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they even had one on uh, uh, Twilight Zone. Mm -hmm. A Civil War picture. The guy that was going around and all that and, and had all these people walking home and stuff and the whole thing went on he didn't even realize he was dead yeah, right. and the woman and everybody around him was dead he looked at soldiers and everybody's dead that's what's going on here let me read that again the word death or the dead are used in, in old scriptures referring to living humanity in earthly embodiment we scary mortals are the dead this is some nightmare shit right. you understand we sitting up here I'm not talking about dead in consciousness. Right, 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 right. Truly, we are dead in consciousness. That's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is all this shit we be seeing in these horror movies and in these sci-fi shits. You need to read the scriptures because they ain't got nothing on these scriptures. Now they say that the Egyptians 
were the most illuminated people ever to walk the face of the earth, the Africans. They call them a sage race, a teacher race. Okay? A teacher race. Now, the Egyptians said that we scurrying mortals are the dead of the Bible and other sacred books. And the dead spoken of there is the living existence here. <coughs> Even they said in Neil, you've been living in a damn dream world. Right. You see what I'm saying? You've been living in a dream world. Even in the Nag Hammond, they was talking about mayhem, corruption, all kind of fucked up things. They said these people are dreaming dreams. So here, Alvin Lord Hume figured this shit out by studying the text by 1940. What happened was is he said some shit that the Egyptologists found out by reading the scripture said, you don't need to put that shit out. <clears throat> then you understand why you don't get up in these same books. You right. see what I'm saying? Well, read that again. That's just some profound shit right there. <laughs> that makes it... I had to deal... I had, recently, I had to deal with a whole lot of shit with, a, with, with some stuff that's going on based on some moralism thing. Well, I should be doing this or not. And I have to keep reminding myself, this shit does not exist. Mm -hmm. We're a bunch of dead people thinking we're alive right. and been dead millions of years ago. That's what they said. The Egyptians said that there was a group of people that died millions of years ago, a couple thousand years ago, and after they died, this earth and this civilization, all this shit that we, we come into being is what is left over. Mm -hmm after these people died. The Greeks say it's something left behind. So it's a big, vast dream. So I'm saying, wait a minute, hold on. If the key to being a god is immorality. If this is an illusion. And maybe that's what black people are doing because we ain't got nothing left to us. man. We can't trust each other. We can't do nothing. We'll kill each other. Maybe that's divine. Maybe because we are so opposite from civilization to the white boys looking back and say, the motherfuckers are losing their mind now. Mm -hmm. Which means they're waking up. Right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Think about it now. I told you that the Greek Christ, which happened to say, Greece and all now, we didn't invent that shit. They said this shit came to us through some ancient world is Dionysus, which is Osiris. Mm -hmm. Plutarch figured that out. And one of his realms is somber madness. He is the god of madness. So yet we up here saying, oh man, I don't know what looks like black people. We are mad. Mm -hmm. And they said, wait, 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 wait. If this, if we scurry in mortals of the dead and you become mad in death, <laughs> that means you got to be waking up. Right. Because if you just the regular person going up, going, and the most admired, that means that you are still dead. Right. And the only spark now is madness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. See, you gotta look at the magnitude of what we're talking about here. Cause see, we still train say, wait a minute, that motherfucker up there just talking some crazy <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, look, you coming in a room on a Sunday <laughs> in the year 2000, you sitting down and listening to a person, and we're talking about insanity. Right. <laughs> That is it. Because yeah. everything else we figure out, man, just, shh. They're just words. But this is when you get into the spirit, because that's what it is. The Christ thing is supposed to be something that's out of the ordinary. You know what I'm saying? Don't supposed to be somebody coming back driving some car and she's going to just go down here and pick some peaches. <laughs> no, that's right. And it goes to show that what they turn into this religion and this moralism is totally opposite for what we need to be dealing with. And everybody talk about a spiritual man. Pharaoh, come on, a spiritual man. That's a spiritual man. This preacher, a spiritual man. And we don't know what spirit is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Spirit is all the shit that the sinners do. That's the spirit. If this is an a, a, a dream and an illusion, then total nihilism. Nihilism means you don't give a fuck about nothing. Right. You're nihilist. Anarchy. Mm -hmm. 
That's chaos. Right. That is the only thing there is. You see what I'm saying? That, that's the only thing there is. And in order for us to function, to get to the God realm, we cannot accept information coming that we agree on. Right. <coughs> that's not information. That's not knowledge. If you agree on this shit, you're supposed to learn something that you... This is crazy shit. That's what knowledge is. You see what I'm saying? Now, uh, so, so, uh, um, but now, listen to this. Colonists from Heaven, the same book, Lost Light, Alvin Boyd Q. K-H-U-N, Lost Light, Colonists from Heaven. To begin here with, a vast mass medieval legend Focus on Mil Milton's Milton's grand epic. Milton wrote a book called Paradise Lost. Milton was a part of a large, and probably was a Moorish large, a hermeticist. The tradition that man having lost paradise, having been cast out of heaven and thrown into a prison, a dungeon, a pit, a lake of pitch, you go that pitch again, a dark cavern of the underworld, where suffering was intensified by fire, was almost universal in the background of theological beliefs over a long period of time. This wide possession might remain highly instructed had Milton, this group of her method, uh, uh, had in common with all the other isolated hermetic groups in Europe at that particular time, had lost the signal had, had, had lost had the lost signal of knowledge that the fallen angels this thing would have been they said in so many words this could have gone to another level than just some moralism or some stuff that we got now that we can't understand and we scared of you know, they had the lost signal let me get this lost signal hold on uh, the lost signal of knowledge that the fallen angels, the rebel hosts, the armies of Satan, and Lucifer were collectively man himself. Right, right. Did I say you lying behind God to see my blue head fucking brains out? He don't know what time it is. Read this shit again. The possession might have been remained highly instructive had Milton in common with other isolated hermeticists in Europe, lost the signal knowledge that the fallen angels, the rebel hosts, the armies of Satan and Lucifer were collectively man himself, and that the fiery lake into which they were hur hurled into was our good earth. Mm -hmm. Goddamn. There you, go. you see what I'm saying? Was our good earth. So, the religious shit is all turned around. We got to sift out all this kind of stuff here because good and evil, right and wrong, don't exist. Right. The gods don't have a concept. It is only energy. You see what I'm saying? It's only energy. It doesn't exist. You see what I'm saying? Moralism shuts us down. Right. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's go on. Uh, mm. Let's go on. A few other things. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see for some stuff.